So I made this same video a while back, but now that the Cleveland Cavaliers just recently clinched a spot in the 2023 playoffs, I wanted to make a more updated and better version. Today I am going to go all the way back to 2018 to tell the whole story of how Cleveland went from being a complete mess with no direction to being a top 10 team in the NBA in less than 5 full years. But before I begin, I would really appreciate it if you would drop a like on this video and subscribe. It only takes 5 seconds, plus you can always change your mind. I'm now on the road to 10k subscribers and I know you all can help me get there very fast and by the way, thank you all for getting me past 8k, it truly means the world and we are just growing super fast right now. So starting off in the beginning of the 2018 offseason, we all know LeBron left and headed for LA and the Cavs were pretty much left with nothing but role players on horrendous contracts. The Cavs did have the 8th pick in the draft, so that was a start. They also signed Kevin Love to a massive 4 year deal which at the time had Cavs fans super excited because even though Brown was gone, they still had their star to build around. Anyways, the Cavs knew that the only way they would be able to turn their future around is if they hit big on some draft picks. It of course started off in the 2018 draft where Colin Sexton fell into their laps with the 8th pick. Sexton was a perfect example of how they wanted to build their new culture, he was a gritty player that was always in the gym working, and everybody knew about his famous 3 on 5 game at Alabama where they were facing Minnesota and he caught fire and nearly brought his team to victory pretty much by himself. Anyways, now the Cavs had Colin Sexton and a bunch of older guys that were towards the end of their career and didn't fit well with the new direction. So it's pretty obvious why the Cavs weren't predicted to win a lot of games that season, but they really showed us how bad they were, winning only 19 games in their first season of the official post LeBron era. Luckily for Cleveland though, they were able to trade away some of their players that season for assets and they were able to land the 5th pick in the lottery along with a few others. During this season, head coach and champion Tyron Lue was also let go because the Cavs were serious about their new fresh start. With the 5th pick in the NBA draft, as most of you guys know by now, the Cavs took a big chance on a guard out of Vanderbilt named Darius Garland. This pick was of course heavily criticized by fans in the media because it just made no sense. They just drafted an undersized guard the year before so it didn't make sense why they would want two of them, especially back to back years. Also, nobody really knew who Garland was because he was only able to play 5 games at Vanderbilt before his season ending injury. But for the Cavs though, they didn't see this Garland pick as risky because he was the best player available on the board and they saw the shiftiness and 3 point shooting he had and could develop. They definitely did know this pick was an experiment though and could easily backfire. In this same draft, the Cavs also traded up to get Dylan Windler and they took another risk for Kevin Porter Jr who really was a top 10 talent in the draft but he had tons of off the court issues that nobody else wanted to deal with. I don't think at this time the Cavs really cared that much about the off the court issues, they were just trying to stack up as much young talent as possible. So now after all of this, the Cleveland roster consisted of young players like Sexton, Garland, Porter Jr, Osman, Windler, and a few others. It was finally starting to feel like a real rebuild. They also still had a few older guys around that were supposed to mentor the young players. The Cavs also decided to take a new route and hire John Beeline as their head coach from Michigan. They thought a college coach may relate better to the young players and they also hired JB Bickerstaff as the assistant coach from the Grizzlies. Anyways, Cleveland started out the 2019-20 season basically just experimenting different lineups and trying different things. Kevin Love was always getting injured, or at least faking them, but it was all a part of the plan. Garland showed flashes of what he was capable of but had no consistency, and Sexton was a scoring machine, but the Cavs still didn't know if the small backcourt could be a realistic long term plan. Also, Kevin Porter Jr looked like the steal of the draft that season and he even had me excited about his game. All in all though, the Cavs of course still had a bad record this season, they pretty much shipped off any remaining vets like Jordan Clarkson outside of Kevin Love because of his contract. They even tried to bring in Andre Drummond the second half of the season which didn't make much sense to me because they were rebuilding, but they also basically got him for free. One bright spot for the Cavs during this season was Larry Nance Jr who was providing great defense to the team that was getting noticed league wide. He was leading the league in steals for a while. The 2020 season as we all know was ended short due to the pandemic but the NBA ended up playing it out in the bubble but the Cavs weren't invited because they suck so bad. 
As much as guys like Colin Sexton really wanted to be out there playing, I think this long break was good for the franchise because it gave the front office a lot of time to think and figure out what their plans for the future were. So now after all of this, the Cavs got the fifth pick again in the draft lottery where they would take Isaac Okoro, a defensive guard out of Auburn. Now the Cavs had developed a little bit of a core to build around, but they still had Andre Drummond who picked up his option, so they had to figure out a buyout. Andre Drummond really was overall pretty bad for this team. He did some decent things, but the one play to me that sums up his career in the land is the one against the Grizzlies where he randomly dribbled up the ball and threw it in the air to himself and that was instantly on not top 10. Anyways, moving on to the 2021 season, they started off pretty solid at 500 and it seemed like they had some things figured out. But it wasn't for long until they would start losing again. Then later on at the trade deadline, Cleveland of course struck gold in the James Harden trade to the Nets where they snuck in and received Jared Allen and this was a genius move by Kobe Altman. Basically what happened is that the Nets wanted to get Harden from the Rockets to create a big three with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. This meant the Nets knew they wouldn't have the money to pay Jared Allen so they wanted to trade him and get something back. For whatever reason, the Rockets didn't want to pay Allen either, so the Cavs offered to take him for a first round pick, and it's safe to say that move has worked out pretty well. Jared Allen, unlike Drummond, was way more of an athletic center that could finish around the rim and fit into the timeline of this team a lot better. So even though the Cavs were still at the bottom of the league this season, things were looking uphill after some of the trades and roster moves they made. But nobody would have expected what was to come next, not even people that worked in the organization. So in the 2021 NBA draft lottery, the Cavs finally struck huge and got the third pick in the draft and it was clear that there was three top players in the draft in no apparent order. The Pistons ended up falling in love with Cade Cunningham and the Rockets never really considered Mobley, so the Cavs were able to get the seven footer. It turns out pairing together Mobley and Jared Allen would create the most unstoppable duo in the league and their paint protection was displayed throughout the 2022 season. So now going into 2022, the Cavs had an actual starting lineup with no holes outside of speed. They were able to bring over Laurie Markkinen from the Bulls in a sign-in trade and head coach JB Bickerstaff was willing to take a big risk and try something new going away from small ball and starting three seven footers. We all know that the league is still even today shifting towards the three pointer, but I think the Cavs made some teams question if that was really the way to go. The Cavs started out last season very hot and they surprised the whole league and had everyone talking. But then unfortunately, all the injuries came in and torched the roster, starting with a season ending injury to Colin Sexton and then Ricky Rubio. Speaking of Rubio, the Cavs also brought him over in a trade for Torian Prince. So technically, the first round pick the Cavs traded to the Rockets got them both Jared Allen and Rubio. Kobe Altman is such a finesser. Anyways, the Cavs hot start was the story of the NBA until all those injuries happened. We all know after Cleveland fell to the 8th seed and lost in the play-in tournament, but I knew they could have done much more and I don't think anyone was ready for what was about to happen in the offseason. So yeah, out of nowhere, in the middle of last offseason, the Cavs traded for Donovan Mitchell from the Utah Jazz. This trade was the talk of the offseason, everyone thought Mitchell was headed to New York, but the Cavs went all in and somehow got a deal done. They of course had to trade Colin Sexton, Laurie Markkinen, and a ton of first round picks, but this trade was worth it in every aspect. Letting go of Markkinen did hurt, and he has become an absolute star for the Jazz, but even still, you can't pass up a Donovan Mitchell trade. As we all know, Mitchell has played really well this season for the Cavs, and he's broken many records, including a 71 point game. But yeah, that's basically how the Cavs went from being a lottery team to the top of the league in just 5 years. And honestly, it was less than 5 years, it was more like 4 because of that COVID season that was cut short. And the crazy thing is about all this, the Cavs are most likely about to face the Knicks in the first round of the playoffs, and man, that series is gonna be crazy because everyone knows that Mitchell was supposed to be a Nick and I can't wait to see what happens. But yeah, that's gonna wrap up this video and I hope you enjoyed. I'm gonna start posting more consistently on this channel, so make sure to stay tuned for more videos. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this one and also let me know what you want to see next. But yeah, thank you all for watching and until next time, I'll see you all later.